guys, so today let's look at my 2023 reading journal and how my reading did go. So you would have seen all my spreads that I did in my 2023 reading journal setup video. So all of these will be familiar. So my first challenge that I had for myself was spell my name in books. And clearly I didn't get there because I still have nine letters that I didn't complete. This one was just a fun thing, but I wasn't really going out of my way to read books specifically by these letters. But I'm pretty glad that I got to like V though. That's a harder letter in my opinion. But everything else was just because it lined up well, because just the book that I managed to pick at the time did fit some of the letters but I definitely didn't complete this little fun thing that I had. This was my book tracker, so I read 42 books in the year of 2023, so obviously I was 10 off my reading goal, but I still think I did a pretty good job. This is my recommendations challenge, so I'll try and hold it this little bit closer. So, fingerprint on the cover, I read Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. Title starts and ends with the same letter I didn't complete. This one was really hard because, like, I thought I would find one, but every book I read did not have this, and I just was a bit disappointed pointed by that. A Heart on the Cover, I did Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman, and it is also in the title. The oldest book I own, I'm pretty sure, is a book by Anna Banks called, like, Of Poseidon or something, so I never read that one. Next was a book set in a place you want to visit. I did The Amber Spy Class by Philip Pullman because a lot of it does take place in England, and that is a place I wanted to visit, and a place I did visit in 2023, so it works out. Game Board of the Gods was Cat's Challenge, and I did not do it, and I'm so sorry, but hopefully in the future I will manage to get there. A dual timeline story, I did Nine Lies by Maureen Johnson, because the way she writes her murder mystery stories is you get first person POV of the people that are affected by the murder cases back in the day, as well as our main character trying to solve them, and I think it's a really interesting format. A backlist book from an author I love, I picked Ferris by Marissa Mai, and I picked this one because the reason I never finished The Lunar Chronicles is because I I couldn't be bothered to read Ferris, so I definitely feel like it was a backlist book for me because I just didn't want to read it back in the day. A 2023 release is Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey because I managed to read only a couple of my anticipated releases, but I did get to that one, which made me excited. A book recommended by a friend. I just, yeah, didn't get any recommendations, and I know I could have asked someone, but I just never got around to it, so that just didn't happen. And a fairy tale retelling, I'm picking A Soul to Keep by Opal Rain because it gives Beauty and the Beast vibes, and you can't tell me differently, and they even talk about Beauty and the Beast in the story, so it's it's canon, it's a vibe. And lastly, a second book in a series, Boss Witch by Anna Aguaya, so second book in the trilogy, which made it gown. This is the first year that I've done a book length tracker, so you can see that most of the books that I read were between three 100 and 400 pages. The biggest book that I read was in the 700-800 range, so I didn't read a lot of big ones, but I definitely was here for a majority of the time. But I did manage to read eight books over 500 pages, which I think is pretty good, and even nine books between 400 and 500 is pretty good. But definitely in my next years of reading journaling, I'm coming away from these stickers that actually do stick out, because like they're fun, but they're really annoying when you want to like write on them and they stick through the book, and it just makes it thicker than it needs to be. So I'm definitely going to get away from them in the years to come because it's just going to make it so much easier to journal. Okay, my next tracker is my best book of the year tracker and I do really like having this tracker because it does help me narrow down the books that I really like and define my top book because it's a good one for process of elimination but to be fair some of my favorite books of the month might not actually be my favorites at all because like King of Wrath I think might have been the only book I read that month or something so it might not have been a favorite but it was the only one that I had and some months it was really hard to pick my favorite because I might have read three books that month that I really liked, but I had to pick one of them, so some of them might be more favourite than others, but it just became like a really fun way to like see it, even though when I do my top 15 books of the year, it doesn't always reflect this list, which I think is really good. Okay, coming to my read buy tracker, obviously I've had some months where I did buy a lot more than I expected, but one of the things though is I only talk about books that I physically buy myself, so if I don't spend money on books and I acquire them or I get given them as gifts it isn't reflected in this tracker because as I said it's about what I buy but if I end up getting like five books for other things it does count but it doesn't it's it's an odd thing but it's the way that I've learned to see it because like for December I only bought five books but because I had rewards money 
I bought like eight others that don't count because I didn't physically spend money so I acquired them but it didn't cost me so that is why some of them are a bit different but obviously this is rare and that arrow means I bought more than 15 books but how can you not buy books at a convention it's too hard and my star rating I always end up having five stars as the top thing that I read because I've just been like less critical about my books to the point where it's like if I enjoy it it gets five stars so I've had more four star reads than I did the year before but three star reads definitely weren't as bad as some years and I didn't have any two or ones which is always good but five Five star reads having so many is good for me and then my genre tracker was a bit different this year because last year most of them were adult contemporaries but because I've read like the bonds that tie and a lot more of like the paranormal aspect I had so many more in the paranormal this time and I feel like I did branch out on my genres a bit more than the last year so I'm actually quite proud of having so many more spots in each tracker but these are also going to become different stickers just because they just stick out too much and it has been annoying me quite a lot. And then we will just quickly go through my page counts and all my readings. Like I don't really have to go into too much detail because you should know from my wrap ups what I've read. So none of these should be a shock but it's always fun just to see how much I do track and different things. Because like certain books like if I own the audiobooks which I did with um, Broken Bonds I track what I read so it takes me a lot longer because I'm really listening to the audiobooks but then I've got all my physical books in there so like the yellow is another audiobook that I'm listening to at the same time as the physical books so I am generally reading two books at a time which is just the way that I do read. May was pretty decent like I had some pretty like long days in there of reading which I am proud of. June was a bit of a weird month because I did read a lot but I wasn't finishing a lot. So literally A Soul to Keep was the only book I read that month but that is fine. July, a little bit like shorter on the things because you just see like some months I just really didn't want to read but because I finished the books that I read in June, more of a page count there. And obviously Heartstopper volumes always go a bit quicker. And then September, so here I was in the UK, so you can see that all of these were times that I was on a train, a boat, or a plane. So I was reading, and then we come to next month, I read nothing in England. I just couldn't be bothered reading. We were driving the whole time, and there was just no time for me to read. Like, I probably listened to a bit of an audiobook or some music in that time, but I didn't finish one. But then once I got back, it was Laura Olympus, because I definitely had to read those books. November, so I read a bit more here, and I was very consistent with trying to get through Good Girl, Bad Blood, and As Good As Dead, because I was really invested. And then December, like, I wasn't reading as much and I had quite a few smaller books in there but I'm still like really happy with how I went because I'm pretty sure December was the month that I had the most books read in but that is all for the journal this year. I think I did pretty good. Like, that's my 42 books of reading. And it's always fun just to see the journal all filled out. Like, because when you start the year, it's so fresh. And then you just start to scribble and everything. But I do hope you enjoyed this video of just seeing how my reading journal went. And if you want to know more about how I track things. Because I'm not a big tracker person. Like, I only track my page count. But I still really enjoy having my journal. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!